Hey yo, what's up? We're back again, 455 Restaurant in Parktown North. It's your boy DJ Shays. Welcome back to the Producers Corner, episode 4, season 2. Today I'm joined by our business guest, Jerry Sabwa. Yes, I said it right. How are you doing, brother? <laughs> I'm fantastic. How are you doing? Chief? I'm good, I'm good, man. Thank you for joining us. No, um, so, Jerry Sabwa is an mm. independent record label owner who's now working with the likes of Ricky Taylor, who was on the coming, featured on the Coming to America, right? Mm -hmm. And that's huge, bro. That's yeah. huge. Because I saw the Coming to America um, album. And um, also Tiny Desk um, concert on YouTube as well. Yes. Um, so yeah, so this is the man in charge and responsible for that. So yeah, man, tell us a bit about the, the, the independent record label space. What's the biggest difference between an independent record label and a normal traditional record label? Uh, okay, I think for me, the two biggest differences between an independent label and a major label uh, is one, just money. Just money, <laughs> yeah. Just like straight up. Yeah, no, 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 no. I think, I think, I think especially with like functionality and like getting things done, the only difference between me and, a, and, a, and a, another record label is the amount of funding we have to spend on an artist. Mm. So that's one. Two, a big part, especially now with everyone having access to social media and that, uh, major labels don't, don't have focus as much on artist development. Mm. As, as you your independent would. So at a major label, it's you and a thousand other artists. Mm. While, while me, on the other hand, I have two force. I have the time to focus on, uh, cool, what do you actually do? What do you want to do? Let's make sure you're doing well. At a major label, it's you, a thousand people, maybe there's one <laughs> guy for 30 artists. So there's, there's not enough time to develop everybody. You know, one thing I heard about major labels is mm. that they sign some of the artists, you know, just to have them on the roster. Yeah. And it's a, such a sad thing, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. So um, uh, again, so it's, because the idea is simple. Like I have you on, you got, when you put up music, I want to make money, mm -hmm. right? But the problem with that is that now nah, I got you, I have Temba, I have whoever, whoever, but maybe you need some help with XYZ. And maybe mm -hmm. you need a confident booster. Maybe you need to go here. Right. I can't do everything at once. Somebody's going to fall short somewhere. Mm -hmm. But at an independent, I, ha I have the time and focus to be on you. I can be like, cool, let's make sure. What do you specifically need to get XYZ done? All right, actually, that brings me to my second question. Mm. Um, my second question. <laughs> um, so, what other benefits do artists get from working with an independent record label as opposed to a major record label? Um, okay, I'll just bring that the artist development thing back. So, because usually, generally, right, at an independent, it's uh, you find a lot more people who are doing it for the love of music as opposed to just the business of music, mm. right? So, I. Uh, not to say major labels don't care about the artist, but I. But when I'm coming to you, I'm coming to you. A cool, this is a long-term thing, and I, I believe in. I generally believe in the music you're making. So you're, you're not just another number on, on the roster. For me. Mm. I actually, I actually, I give a damn. You're not number thousand. Yeah, you're not number thousand. <laughs> you know, I know your name. I know, I know who you are. I know who your mom is. I know like mm. what your current struggles are. What you, what you need right now. And I believe in you going forward. So you're, you're, it's more than a business, it's more of like a family setting. Mm. Mm. Okay, all right, I hear you. Um, you know, so I want to know, where do you see the record label and artist relationship in the next five years in terms of structure, in terms of management, in mm. terms of deals? Like, how is it going to change? Because COVID has changed a lot. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, so what do you think is going to happen in the next five years that's going to change that? Um, I think uh, there'll, be, there'll be less of a need for the major label, the, for me, I mean, it's already happening. Yeah, it's, it's already happening now. But there's, they'll, they'll still be relevant because they're just, they're just too many artists in, in the world for that, for them, for their, their space to like completely disappear. But there'll be, I'll, there'll be less people needing to be like, I have to be on Sony to pop. I have to be on Universal. Um, at an independent, we can do everything a major label can do. The, the literal difference is just like cool. We don't have a, a million rand budget spending <laughs> you. Like, you know, we don't have it yet. Yeah, no, no, fair enough, exactly. So, uh, there, there are independent labels who do have that funding and that budget to make it work. So, there's, there's almost no difference between me and, me and them. Um, but I think there'll be, and the other thing is with how record deals are also done. That's what I want to know. I, I would say, even going forward, less less major labels will be will be in a position where they're going to own your masters. I think everyone's going to move back to uh, leasing instead. So as opposed to me coming to you as an artist and saying, "Cool, I'll give you X Y Z, I'll give you an advance, and I'm going to own your catalog," I'll rather come through 
I'll lease your catalog. So I'll own your masters for maybe five, five years with like a two-year recoup, and then it'll go back to you. If the artist is in licensing, the, la the label has more of an incentive to make to push you because they have a, sm a window of time mm. to make that money back. Mm. After that time is done, the masters go ba goes back to goes artist. goes back to me, and now the label doesn't have a, the, the position to make money anymore. Right. So I think a lot more people will move to, to a more licensing space. All right. Yeah. Last question: What is the most important part of an artist and record label deal? Uh, and what should artists like look and focus on? That's a tricky one. I think that one should be specific to the artist, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Different artists require different things. Like, let's say you're, you know, you're, you're a struggling artist coming out of the hood, mm -hmm. right? You need money. <laughs> like right now, you need like immediate... Everyone uh, needs money. You know, yeah, yeah but, you, but you need immediate <laughs> money. You need like, mm -hmm. cool, I need to either get out of my space or put my, my family in a position. So that's one. There might be another artist who's who he can afford to record his own music and do all that, but he needs to he needs maybe radio reach. Mm. So I think the artist should ask themselves what do they need right now to make sure that they're in a space where they can record music to the best of their ability and give the label a product that they can push to the best of their ability. So I would say um, for, try your best to own your master, try your level best, and if you don't own your master. Uh, or if you're in a position where you have to give up control of your master to get a better deal for your particular situation at the moment, I'd say that's fine. But just keep that in mind that that, that particular time, that month, those five years or whatever, mm. you need to make that relationship work so that when you come back to renegotiate, you're in a better position with the label. Leverage. Exactly. So I think every artist, even before going to a label, I think you should build as much leverage as possible to where that you, the label needs you more than you need the label. Yes, I get you. I get you. I get you. All right, thank you, man, for coming through Appreciate to the it, producer's man. corner. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, so we at Bow Fifty Five Restaurant in Parktown North. Uh, we are about to have lamb chops. Yeah. <laughs> Lamb chops and, and mash. Um, so oh, man, yeah. let's, let's have some food, man. And chow. We've the been most. talking about business and record labels. And now, mm. you're tell, gonna tell get me, this. Tell me mm. what you think of the food, man. All right, look, first of all, it looks fantastic. It's the so. presentation, you know, for- nah, presentation is great. Shout out to the chef yeah. at Bowl chef 55. <laughs> Wherever you're at, please. All right, you guys have heard it. You've seen it for yourself. Our business guest, shout out to him, Jerry Sabwa, you know, uh, coming here, dropping some knowledge on record labels and the whole thing, the whole dynamics. Uh, shout out to Paul 55 Restaurant Park Town North for hosting us. Uh, come through to the Fridays, yo, you know, I'm on the decks, you know, I'm doing my things. Your boy DJ Shay's in the building. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and retweet. It's your boy in the building, but this is Corner Season 2, Episode 4, away.